So I wanted to take a look at uh, some of the basic progressions of climbing systems over the years, um, starting all the way back at you know, like old school stuff and moving forward uh, towards the newer stuff. Um, so today we're, I'm going to talk specifically about doubled rope systems, moving rope systems, um, which is the old, old school tried and true method of tree climbing, right? So um, a few weeks ago we had touched on, on uh, moving from a closed system, which is where you take you, one rope, you tie yourself to it, and then you have a tail and you tie that back uh, with a climbing hitch back to itself. That was called the closed system. So uh, step number one, moving on a progression uh, from old school moving forward, step number one would be what we already discussed about using a split tail, what's called an open system, okay? Which is what I have here, right? So this is my climbing line, the blue, and then my split tail, the orange, this is my, my hitch. Um, and what this means, a couple things, Mainly, I, I always have uh, access to the end of my line, right? So I can, it's easy to advance my, my system without untying my hitch every time. And number two, uh, friction hitches, they produce a lot of heat from friction, right? And uh, in, in the closed system where you're tying the rope back to itself, the end that you're always tying the friction hitch with is, is going to wear down a lot faster than the rest of the line. So you're gonna have to cut it off periodically. Uh, so with the split tail system, you don't have to do that. You just replace the split tail itself, okay? So that would be step number one in that progression from old school, would be just to move from a closed system to an open system, a split tail system like this, okay? Um, now progression number two would be this. Uh, a slack tending pulley, okay? So this is just a micro pulley, nothing special. These are cheap and they work really nice with these cheap little uh, dog snap swivel things, okay? So basically all you would do is you would pop the, the swivel, the dog snap onto your beaner, right? And then you would take the micro pulley, put that onto the climbing line below the, uh, the friction hitch and then you would put the dog snap on there. Okay, and now this, this allows a few different things. Um, number one, let's say you're coming in from a limb walk, right? So you're pulling your slack. This allows you to reach below and you can pull, right? And it pulls, it, it tends the, uh, the friction hitch automatically, right? So uh, that's a huge advantage. Uh, a second advantage would be, uh, let's say you're spurring up on a lead uh, back up into the tree and you, you know, you've already had your, uh, your system set. Um, someone on the ground could actually just hold the tail and pull as you go. And that would, that would do the same thing. That would automatically pull your hitch up for you. You know what I mean? So that is a major step up, uh, from, uh, from old school is just, just using just a basic micro pulley slack tending system like that. Okay. So now, if you wanted to move beyond there, what I recommend would be the, uh, the, new, the newer style um, hitches, which we call eye to eye, okay? So these are more advanced and generally smoother. They generally work better. And, they look like this. There's two different ways to do these. Um, you can get the, uh, the spliced ones like this, and, or you can just buy hitch cord itself and tie your own, okay? And I have a video on how to do that as well on the channel. Now, um, in those old school systems before, what I was showing with the taut line and the Blake's hitch, those are tied in the same diameter line as your climbing rope, okay? These systems are different. These use rope that is around 25% smaller in diameter, which means um, if I'm climbing like a full half inch line, like a 12.5 to 13 mil or something, um, what I want for a friction hitch is about around 25% smaller than that. So uh, the 10 mil 
The 10 mil uh, I2Is are what you want for, for a thicker rope, like a, closer to a full half inch. Um, the smaller lines, you want uh, an 8 mil, 8 mil uh, friction hitch cord for your I2I, okay? So the way these work, there's a whole different class of, of climbing hitches that we use for, uh, for these I2Is. Um, if you're just starting out, I would recommend a, a Schwabish. So I'll show you how to, I'll show you the way that I recommend for a beginner with a, with a Schwabish, okay? So you're gonna take once around and again and again and then you're going to pass it in front of and behind and tuck back through. Okay, so that's tying and then dressing. You got to work it all the way around so that it's equal so that the, the tails are, are at the same length there. Okay, so I call this um, I call this like a 3-2 Schwabish. Uh, there's lots of different ways to, to look at it, but basically you have you have three wraps up up top and then two below, which are your tails. Um, but this is what I would recommend for a beginner if you're just starting with eye to eye prosics. Um, I would recommend the, the, the three two Schwabish like that. Um, and there's also a video on the channel where I show how to tie that as well. Um, so that's step number one. Step number two is, again, you need a slack tending pulley. You don't need an expensive one. You can just use a cheap micro pulley. Again, you're going to pop that on the rope below the friction hitch. Okay. And I can grab a beaner here. So then the way to set this up with your beaner is you put one leg of your Schwabish on the outside. So your beaner goes through the leg. It goes through the micro pulley and then the other leg goes on the other side. Okay, like that. And then you would rotate that around. So generally anytime, uh, anytime we're setting something up like this where there's symmetry and you're sharing the load between multiple things, it's highly recommended that you use an oval beaner like this one as opposed to um, I don't know if I have one on me. There's lots of different shapes of beaners. The, uh, oh, this one, right? So this one here, this one here is not, not oval, right? It's, uh, it's narrower at the bottom, wider at the top, as compared to, as compared to an oval, right? An oval is, is almost perfectly symmetrical, which is ideal when you're sharing the load, so. Okay, so that would be my eye to eye basic climbing system. So I would, I would hook that up like this. Okay, I would, want, I would want the terminal end on the inside and I would want the, uh, the hitch system on the outside. And what this allows me to do again, uh, as I climb, I, I, I now <laughs> the big difference with this, one of the big differences between these systems and uh, the old school Blakes and Tot line. With the Blakes and Tot line, you were always climbing below the hitch because you had this bridge, you had this length gap here. Um, with these new systems, you're always working above the hitch. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm ascending, I'm gonna reach above my hitch, I'm gonna pull, pull myself up, and then I'm gonna reach below, grab that tail, and I'm gonna pull that slack using that slack tending pulley like that, right? That's, that's the basic operation of these newer, stu newer style uh, climbing systems, right? Um, and then from there, if you wanted to get a little bit fancier, you could use these. This is a, a hitch climber pulley. Now at some point, I don't know why this is, uh, at some point, the people started saying a hitch climber system or a hitch climber setup, and it became synonymous with the hitch climber pulley, but they're actually, they're not the same at all. Like this, all you need for a hitch climber system is just a regular micro pulley. You don't need the expensive, fancy hitch climber pulley, 
okay? Just for clarification. So the hitch clamber pulley is nice, however, for other reasons. So again, same, same friction hitch. I take my hitch climber pulley, put that on the rope, right? And then I take, again, my, my beaner goes through the one leg. It goes through the bottom hole of the hitch climber. And then the other leg goes, of the cross, it goes on there. And then you'd rotate that around. Okay. So now at this point, you have two options with the hitch climber pulley. Um, if you're using a, a, a spliced rope, you have the option of now clipping, you can clip your uh, terminal end into the middle hole of the hitch climber pulley like this. And now you've got a really compact, uh, nice system, which, which joins to your belt with only one beaner, okay? In this case, you can see this is not a spliced rope, obviously. And what that means is um, you wouldn't clip it to your hitch climber because the, uh, the termination knot can really interfere with the friction hitch, right? It's, uh, it can lead to a lot of issues. Not recommended at all. So if you're using a hitch climber pulley, um, don't, don't clip your your terminal end onto the hitch climber, just, just clip it back to your belt or your ring or whatever. Okay. So you're really only getting the full benefit of the hitch climber pulley if you're using a spliced rope. Okay. Because that allows you to clip in to the, the pulley itself. Right. Um, now the hitch climber pulley does allow other th options. It allows, you know, it has, it's a micro pulley with three attachment points, right? Three holes. So you, you, have, you do have options for connecting other climbing systems. Um, there is something called the M system, which is, uh, which I, I'm not gonna cover that here, but that's a little bit more advanced as well. But, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you can get some value out of this. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, and hopefully this can help you, you know, progress a little bit further along the spectrum, you know, if you're fully old school and you want to uh, move along into some of the newer stuff, hopefully you can get some ideas from this video. And uh, until next time, peace. Is it good? It's really good.